Pulsati. We continue our magnificent month of derbies with this week's spotlight falling on Milan. There's much more than just city pride at stake with both clubs eyeing the Scudetto. AC Milan has the edge winning 93 of their 248 meetings dating back to 1908. Their last matchup in the league is still a very sore point among Inter fans with AC Milan recording its biggest derby win in 83 years. It wasn't just a victory, it was a six goal stampede. Here's Serginho rampaging. There are men in the middle and it's 1-0 to Milan. And Serginho is away. And he's got plenty of room and it's two. And it's an AC Milan free kick again. And it's gone in, eluded the goalkeeper, eluded everybody. Serginho, the Brazilian, who's been a revelation today. Good looking cross under pressure, and what a great goal! A terrific goal by Shevchenko. Here's Kalaja, the Georgian. And he's looking to find a way through. Good cross. Shevchenko! And Milan go further ahead. And here they come again. Lovely stop. Serginho! Yes! It's six! Following that defeat, Inter's president demanded personal apologies from the players. Eager for revenge, this will be Inter's first real test against one of the genuine title favourites. The likes of Italian striker Nicola Ventola continue to carry Inter, while Christian Vieri and Ronaldo remain sidelined by injury. AC Milan's Turkish coach Fatih Terim is under pressure to answer his critics after two poor results. A 3-1 loss away to Perugia, followed by a one-all home draw with last-placed Venezia. Unbeaten Inter started the day in top spot, one point ahead of Kievo, with AC Milan a further two points back. Your commentator at a packed San Siro is Paul Williams. Welcome to the San Siro, where the colour and the splendour is here to be seen at yet another Milan derby. Well, for Inter, they have Stefan Delmar suspended, so Nelson Vivas makes his first appearance since joining from Arsenal. This pushes Javier Zanetti into the midfield. Mohamed Cullen has been impressive so far this season. He's hit the back of the net four times. Well, for Milan, Alessandro costa Curta makes his second appearance of the season as Milan's back three takes a different look about it today. Filippo Inzaghi's selection was in question, but Fatih Terim gives him the nod to partner automatic choice Andrei Shevchenko. No start yet, though, for Ronaldo. Still injury problems delaying his comeback. But no further delay for the start of this match. And there is no finer sight in Italian football than a packed San Siro on Derby Day. Will it be the black and red of Milan or the black and blue of Inter that will have the right to taunt the opposition supporters for the next six months? Well, adding further intrigue to the whole occasion is the difference between these two sides on the ladder as Materazzi there clatters into the back of Inzaghi. Inter three points ahead of Milan at the moment at the top of Serie A. As Materazzi challenge for that one, just catching Inzaghi in the back of the head. He's OK to carry on. I want some question marks whether it would be Inzaghi or perhaps Javi Moreno in attack for Milan tonight. Inzaghi got the nod. Rui Costa playing just behind the front two. This is Serginho. Well, back heeled delightfully by the Brazilian Serginho once again. Caladze. This is the cross the back three for Milan. Maldini to Lawson to Costa Curta on the ball now. This is Albertini. Chasing hard is Seydorf on Caladze. And that's easy for Francesco Toldo. Well, eight seasons in Florence with Fiorentina. Now he is Inter's goalkeeper. Closing in on his 250th appearance in Serie A.
Inter surging forward down the right-hand side with Nicola Vintola. Well, no surprise that the San Siro is absolutely filled to capacity. 78,000 fans in for this game. As Di Biagio helps it on first time. This is Callon. What a fine he's been. It's Juriatos. Looking in the cross, Zanetti coming in to close him down, but Serginio gets the ball away, and that will go out for a goal kick. Well, Fatih Terim has really been under fire lately. Two bad performances in Milan's last two games, a 3-1 defeat at Perugia, a one-all home draw with Venezia. And all of a sudden you go from a team with a solid start to the season to one in trouble. Perceived trouble, perhaps. And Shevchenko pulls it back. Sadov pressured into a mistake on the edge of the area. Well, great work by Gattuso there. He's such a busy bee in the centre of the Milan midfield, and the referee got it right there, I think, with Sadov's arm just around the waist and the legs of Gennaro Gattuso. So the first genuine opportunity at a strike of goal will go to Miller. Well, Milan had a 2-0 victory in the UEFA Cup during the week. That took a little bit of the heat of Fatih Terim. That was at home to CSK Sofia. Inter also won 2-0 in that competition. But their form in Serie A has been... Well, a little bit more impressive. Well, certainly their results have been more impressive. The form sometime has not been up to scratch, according to many observers. They've been getting results, though. They've got some defending to do here with this free kick. Looks like Shevchenko! Well, it flashed past the post as Andrei Shevchenko went in search of goal number six for the season. There was nothing to complex about that no curls over the wall no dipping shots he just went for raw power Hector Cooper still unbeaten in his charge at Inter it's a tremendous start to the season for him not just in Serie A but in the UEFA Cup as well where they've had three wins out of three and yet to concede a goal so he's certainly tightened things up at the back for Inter Milan Zanetti just helping it on. That's a delightful switch of play from Clarence Seydorf. Gouli, deep cross, Callon's there, Ventil is there. Well, a sweeping Inter Milan move has produced a goal. Well, listen to the noise around the San Siro. It is Inter's home game, in theory. They seem to certainly have the edge in terms of volume and crowd numbers in the stadium. And Fatih Terum leans against the dugout. What a great ball in from Gouli. Callal at the back post, knew he couldn't go for goal himself. Just somehow blocked it back across the centre. Ventola flying in, came off some part of the body it doesn't matter it's a goal for inter the offside flag stayed down Callum was in line ventola did the rest and it's one nil just a Kurta helping it on It's an easy one for Toldo. So Inter Milan flying high at the top of the league. Fresh optimism in their camps that this could be their year. Under the prudent guidance of Hector Cooper, the man who took Valencia to two Champions League finals.
Two goals by Mohamed Kalon during the week in the UEFA Cup. He's set up one here as well for Ventola. Remember, this is an inter-team topping the ladder, and they haven't got their two main strikers. Ronaldo and Christian Vieri are both injured as Jurgatos fires another one in there. It came off Ventola, in fact, as he misjudged the cross. Lawson just challenging in there. Ventola went flying to the ground. He's an all-action type of player. And the collar around the neck of Fatih Terim. Just starting to tighten the fraction, perhaps, with that goal from Nicola Ventola. Zanetti. Seidorf did well to get out of a tight spot, helping it on to Jurgatos. This is Guli Min Pietro, the Argentine. And he does well to squeeze past one, and he's still going goalie. This is a brilliant run. No one there for Inter. Two players went to the back post. No one just dropped off the back, and there was certainly no one joining in from midfield. Great opening there. Flags up for offside for the second phase of that attack. Well, Gulli and Jurgatos combining delightfully there. Lawson beaten. Time to get his head up. Ventola went for the ball in behind Maldini. Callum was in the same space. Caladze had time to clear. Well, this is the offside decision after that move. Callum a mile off. By well, then, I'm sure he was feeling the hurt of missing out on that great opening created by Gulli. Kalon miscontrols. A oh, little deft little dab there from Ventola. Kalon, Ventola wants it back. Great move. Well, he really does look like he's full of life at the moment, Nicola Ventola. Three goals for him this season now. Enter. Pretty much untroubled at the back for most of this first half so far. Regatos feeds it to Seidorf. Di Biagio playing uh, very deep in the centre of midfield. Callon. Brilliant touch for Zanetti, who's fouled. Well, those critics of Inter who have said that they haven't been putting on the most stylish performances of the league so far this season. They might have to read their words here because this is great football from Inter Milan. They've certainly learned how to win games, which is just a little bit more important than the style. Well, they have had their goalkeeper, Francesco Toldo, to thank on several occasions. He's been an outstanding touch so far this season. And coming forward here today, they have very much looked apart. Abiati well and truly off his goal line as Sadorf takes the free kick. Zanetti did well. Sadorf. That's an awkward one, they've all missed it. Well, Ventola, no doubt, was not expecting two defenders to let the ball scrape under their foot. Laos in the second. Maldini the first. Look at that. You can hardly believe what you're seeing. Oh, really clattered into the back there on the number nine in Zaghi. is Kaka Galadze, Costa Curta. Had some problems with injuries so far this season, but the veteran very much looks the part today, back where he belongs in the heart of the Milan defence. 
He and Albertini on the ball and Maldini, the real elder statesman of this team now. Costa Curta even getting forward. Good cross. Well cleared at the front post by Matarazzi. It's the best phase of the game so far for Milan. As Serginho whips in a cross. Good header. Well, certainly met with the meat of the forehead there by Filippo and Zaghi. Toldo, for his part, just pulled it out of the air with the greatest of ease. And Caladze has gone down under that challenge. Referee right on hand to offer some sympathy. Hector Cooper with signals that I'm sure only his players understand. That was the jump there from Ventola on Kaladze. It's away by Ivan Cordoba at the heart of the end of defence. Well, he's been impressive in the first half. Javier Zanetti, the Argentine international. Serginho way over the bar, summing up the first 45 minutes for Milan. Zanetti saying, how about a decision in my favour? Two coaches, dark and brooding, Fatih Terum. Half-time at the derby, and it's Inter Milan who put on quite a show for us in the first 45 minutes, deservingly at least of the one-goal lead that they have at the break. Nicola Ventola with the only goal of the game so far. At half-time, into one, Milan nil. Coming up later in the show, Roberto Baggio guides Brescia into the top half, but there's trouble on the horizon. Fiorentina's woes continue, with Verona taking full advantage. Udinese goes on a scoring spree in Bergamo, and Torino breaks through for its first win. But now let's rejoin Paul Williams for the second half of the Milan derby the most recognized referee in Italy, if not the world. Pierluigi Colina gets the second half underway. The news for Milan is that Albertini has been replaced at half-time by Cosmin Contra, the Romanian international who's new to the club. Contra to slot into the right-hand side of midfield. He's been in and out of the team so far this season, Contra. Terrific attacking player. And the lace has matched the problem there for Ventola, as well as the challenge from Gattuso. So can Inter maintain the hectic pace that they created in the first half? They were too much for Milan, really. Both of these two sides coming into this match on the back of a one-all draw. Milan drew 1-1 with Venezia. And Shevchenko volleys. Didn't really catch it right. Just mutters to himself. Inter drew 1-1 at Udinese. Hector Cooper, by the way, is the third Argentine to coach Inter Milan. There was Herrera and also Caniglia. No surprise that Fatih Terim is the first Turk to coach Milan. Well, there's a foul there. A lot of approval from Zanetti. Louis Costa protests, but he's had a quiet match so far, the playmaker for Milan. There can't be too much doubt about that. So Seydorf will take the free kick. An awkward ball in, and closing in fast was Di Biagio. Well, he doesn't get forward too often these days. And I think a defender just got in front of uh, Luigi Di Biagio there. It's a corner to Inter. A 
aim for the head of Kellon. Just too high for him. Lawson appeared to have ducked. And who was there? Who else but Maldini? Seydorf to take the corner. Kellon came short. Oh, Kellon. I thought he may be offside, but it's another corner to enter. Same again, same two players. Easy cross, though, for Abiati. Well, as usual, Inter brought a lot of players in the off-season, but only the goalkeeper, Francesco Toldo, could really be regarded as a big name. Probably the first time in many off-seasons that they haven't plundered into spending a fortune on players. As Hector Coupe calmed things down. Now we'll have to see. Side off to Gergatos. It's a second chance to go forward. Oh, that's nicely done. This is Gulliman Pietro. Given away to Rui Costa. Does well just to help it on to Shevchenko. Two players quickly to close him down. On with the game quickly, Andre Shevchenko. This is Contra. Well, now we're ready for Gouli to go. The ball's still in, is it? It hasn't gone out. Rui Costa. That's an easy one for the defence. 55 minutes gone. It's still Inter 1, Milan 0. Conventional gesture for what's going on. The arms out to the side from Contra after the shove in the back of uh, Jurgatos. Fatih Terim also wondering what's going on. Well, that's well done by Lawson to get in front of his man. Fatih Terim was sacked part of the way through last season at Fiorentina, then had to just cool his heels and wait for confirmation that he had got the Milan job this season. In Italy, you're not allowed to coach two different teams in the same season. So Cesare Maldini and Mauro Tosotto filled the gap for Milan at the end of the last season. Serginho. That's a brilliant turn from Shevchenko. Rui Costa! Well, that is more like the Milan that we all know. Shevchenko did so well. The ball stuck like glue as he controlled it with a man right behind him. A little layoff was to Rui Costa. He struck it well. Well, it didn't really trouble Toldo. That may be a bit of a shot in the arm for Milan. They need something. Costa gets it back. Seydorf. Just a little bit too eager in the tackle there. Rui Costa, new to Milan this season, but already he's seen as a very important part of the team. He had a spell uh, earlier on in the season where he was injured, and all the talk was when will Rui be coming back? Larson with a deep cross. That's an easy one for Toldo. Well, crosses from deep positions like that are always in favour of the defence. And the line start again. Gattuso spreading it out wide to Larson. Dane also has made a big impact in his first season in Milan. Scored a couple of goals as well. Not bad for a centre-back. Maldini still waiting for his first of the season. Out down the line for an always eager 
Zanetti to chase. He's chasing hard too, putting the defence under pressure as uh, Inter all over the park. Callan almost stealing the ball, he has done. Oh, he's been a judge to have fouled his man, but... If you are wondering just how it is that Inter are top of the ladder, and that was your chance to see, because the work ethic was first class, first from Zanetti, then from Callon. Not too much wrong with that challenge there from Mohamed Callon. No wonder he looked a little bit aggrieved. Cordoba's clearance went straight to a Milan player. At that time it was Matarazzi. Here come Milan again in search of an equaliser. Great cross! Shevchenko! Well, the shirt's gone. That's how much it means. It's total, absolute joy. Not just for Shevchenko, but for the many, many Milan fans in the stadium. Well, somehow he's got it back, but questions will be asked at the back for Inter. They have not made a mistake so far this game. But all of a sudden, they totally lost track of Andrei Shevchenko. He is like lightning, he's so elusive. And Jurgatos took his eye off him for a second, and Milan have made them pay a very heavy price for that. And that's 1-1. So all of the good work that has been done by Inter so far in this game has been has come undone really with one mistake at the back. Gatos, deep cross, easy for Abiati. Shevchenko with a header right out of the coaching manual. Celebrating harder than most is Fatih Terum. Well, I'm not quite sure where the shirt ended up. Well, there's no shortage of them, I guess, if he did manage to lose it. Larson, who push forward down this right-hand side, leaving the central position at the back to Costa Curta in the second half. Kuchenko knocked off the ball. Taken quickly. Play goes on. Here's Contra! Well, in the blink of an eye, Milan have the lead. On another shirt, goes astray. Fatih Terum can't believe it. How quickly can a football match change? Just look at the space there for Contra. But how well did he hit it? That was a quality strike there from Cosmin Contra. Absolutely superb. No charge for Toldo. <laughs> Terum, he is overjoyed. Inter's defence perhaps guilty of not closing down as quickly as they could have. Inter 1, Milan 2. Two in three minutes. complexion of a game can change in a matter of seconds there's a message on the shirt that's why he took his off Sadorf trying to help it on to Callon who did well there but he's giving away the free kick in the process and just for the moment it looks like Inter have lost their way and Hector Cooper about to make a change this is Adriano who's coming on He's only 19. He plays up front. 
It's a case of whether it will be Ventola or Callon or perhaps a midfielder. Gulli goes back to Jurgatos. It's a nice turn away from the trouble and away from the congestion by Di Biagio. Space on the left now for Jurgatos. Can he swing in one of those dangerous crosses? He can. Abiati hasn't taken it. It's a loose ball. First to it, though, was Kaladze who for the second time in the game holds his lower back. And also contemplating a change, in fact almost certain to make a change, is Fatih Terum. Looks like uh, Donati is coming on. looking for goal number four this season. Catuzzo thought about going back to Laos and tried to thread it through to Contra, who really has impressed since coming on at half-time. Kaladze. Matarazzi got ahead on the ball. There was a push by Shevchenko. Two subs waiting to come on, one for each team. The ball won't go out. Gattuso keeps it in and keeps the move going and keeps the mood going for Milan. And the mood is very positive at the moment. Gattuso again. Plenty of space for him on the halfway line. Rui Costa. Contra hugging the touchline. That's a good cross! That's another Milan goal! Well, once again, the question marks will be asked about the marking at the back for Inter. But Contra providing a quite wonderful ball into Filippo Inzaghi. Contra with time to measure the cross, but it was absolutely perfect for Inzaghi at the back post to, not for the first time in this game, found himself in quite a bit of room, really, in the inter-penalty area. And Milan, amazingly now, have a two-goal cushion. Well, Zanetti, who normally plays at the back, Pushed on to midfield for this game. May find him back at the back next week as Serginho is forward. Shevchenko. Well, that's a great goal. And surely now that's the three points for Milan. Well, Hector Cooper is about to suffer his first defeat as coach of Inter. Surely there's no way back for his team now. Not just another goal, but another very well-worked move as well. Great ball down the line for Serginho. Shevchenko as elusive as ever. And he knows what to do from that kind of distance. That's a simple tap-in for a player of Shevchenko's ability. Well, Serginho really enjoying himself now that he's getting a regular run in this team. And that's 4-1. Tuzo, calm as you like, in the centre of midfield. The touch is coming from all over the place. That's a mistake, and Callon comes away with the ball. Got a player going outside him. Callon goes back in the centre. Here's Callon. He's got a consolation for Inter. 
Well, it's a goal that he, as an individual, has certainly deserved. Five goals for him so far this season. He's Inter's main marksman without a doubt, but it's a goal that won't count for much in the bigger picture here at the Milan derby. Just squeezed the ball under Abiati. Great pullback after a good run down the right-hand side by the Turk, Okan. And Inter have just the one goal to show for their second-half performance. Al Fatih Terran will be well pleased with this result. Some would say it's a job-saving result for Fatih Terran. There was a story in the press during the week that he had dinner with three Turkish players who are on Inter's books. It didn't go down too well there either, but this result will go down very well indeed with the Milan fans, and he applauds the supporters. Inter, for their part, will wonder where it all went wrong after such a dominant first-half performance. Inter 2, Milan 4. So Inter suffers another humiliating derby defeat for the second year in a row. The introduction of Cosman Contra at half-time made a big difference as AC Milan took control after the interval.